Hi, I'm Kevin, and today I'm going to show you how I assemble PCBs like these. The board I'm going to be putting together is this board that I made for a project earlier. It's an SMT part flipper. So when you're putting together PCBs, you're going to have a lot of small parts, and half the time when you put them out, they bounce and flip upside down and then it's hard to pick them up with the tweezers and flip them upright so what you can do is set apart on a tray like this and then when you push a button this plate will come over cover it have a piece of foam to keep it from moving flip both back and then expose it again and you'll be left with that part right side up so this pcb has about 24 surface mounted parts and about four through-hole parts, mainly just the button, the LED light, which is here, that's gonna be going up and then bending. That's why it needs to be a through-hole. And then some headers for power and connectors for the servos. I won't be putting everything on this board, most notably these components over here. This was for a soft latch so that you could push the power on and then have it latch and then press and hold to turn it off. This was an older board that I've made and I'm gonna be moving to a, a different soft latch switch. I also probably won't be putting on the USB interface chip for this board. And we're only gonna be using one of these. These are labeled as 2.5 Ks, but these are really just zero ohm jumpers so that you can use either a common anode or a common cathode LED. The LED, which is this, is gonna use a single leg here, this one being a common anode, and then it has three cathode legs. So these will all be cathodes. These jumpers, if you put a zero ohm jumper here, then it'll tie this power rail so that you have a common anode. If you put a jumper here, it'll tie the ground to the common here in case you were using a common cathode LED. To start, we're gonna to need to put some material around the board so that we can fix it in place. And since these are gonna not fully close on this, I'm gonna put a little piece of circuit board here to shore that up and hold it while, so it doesn't move while we're trying to apply the solder face with the stencil. Next, we're gonna lay down our solder stencil and line it up so that all the holes in the solder stencil are lined up with all the the pads on the PCB. Next, we're gonna put some solder paste down and use a card to squeegee it across all the openings. Now we can lift up the stencil and make sure that there's solder paste on all the pads that we're going to be putting components on. You can see the checkerboard pattern here and here on the inside of these ICs. Partially this is for, so that you don't put too much solder down on that large of a surface, but it also helps when you're squeegeeing the solder across the stencil to not pick that solder back up out of the pocket. If there's too big of a pocket, it will have a hard time placing and it'll get lifted up when you're applying force from the backside.
All right, that's all the surface mount parts we're gonna add. Let's put it in the oven and cook it, and then we can put the through-hole parts on after. So we're gonna put it in this oven, bring the temperature up until the solder starts to melt, and then turn it off and bring it out so it can solidify quickly. So here's our board, and here's all the parts we're going to be adding. Alright, so let's take this over to the computer and see if we can program it through these header pins. So as I brought up earlier in the video, we're not going to be using these components over here. So to get power, we're going to need to pull from the 5 volt rail here and add a wire to the 3 volt, 3.3 volt rail there. As well as to make the button actuate, we're going to need to put a wire from here over to there. All right, so with that jumper and that jumper added, let's add power through USB and see if it boots up. So the firmware that's in there right now will cycle through these three colors at the beginning and then wait for a signal from the button and then trigger both of the servos. So let me get a servo and we'll test it out. This is an early version of the hardware, but it does have both servos. So let's hook this up and see if it works. See if it actually flips apart. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you like this project, please subscribe to see more videos on the SMT Parts Flipper. See you next time.